Welcome to Dairy Pod, a podcast series from Dairy Australia. Featuring a range of experts, each episode offers insights into Australia's unique dairy farming conditions, as well as personal experiences and the latest in dairy innovation. Hi everyone, welcome to Dairy Pod and thanks for tuning in. I'm Mick Fuller, National People Lead at Dairy Australia. And in this podcast, we're hearing from some of our farmers that are out there promoting development and capability of skills of their employees. And we'll be talking to them on how they're approaching this, why they're doing this with their people, what are the areas that they see as key, and importantly, how they're doing it. We hope by sharing their story, others can be inspired to do the same. So joining our discussion today is Charlotte and Mark Stevens, based in uh, Nanila in the beautiful Goulburn Valley. And I know it's beautiful, uh, guys, because I was uh, traveling through there on the weekend, and it really is a stunning part of the world that you live in. Um, Charlotte and Mark, uh, welcome, and thanks for your time today, uh, and particularly a busy day, uh, to talk with us. Um, and joining us also is uh, Melba Tyson, Workforce Attraction Lead from our, Mar- our Murray Dairy Regional Office. Welcome, everyone. Hello. Yep. Hello. Hello. So, uh, guys, today we are talking about developing the skills and capabilities of our employees and the impact that that has on farm productivity. Uh, I was thinking we we don't have a lot of control over things like milk price uh, or or the weather, but we can influence how capable our teams become. So, I guess that's the theme for what we're talking about today. But before we get into this, uh, I think people listening uh, would uh, just like to know a little bit about yourselves, Charlotte and Mark. Um, can you give us some background? Um, yeah, so yeah, we're farming at Nanila, uh, milking 500 cows, 50-50 split calving, um, half in the autumn and half in the spring. Um, we're a grass feed system. Uh on 302 hectares of which 220 are irrigated um yeah we've got uh, we've currently got four staff um on a 38 hour week plus seven hours overtime um yeah so one i guess uh, farm manager and and then um three staff that are on um a visa um yeah sort of farm hand guys as well so yeah that's our that's our full team plus us um and yeah i guess we're we're not too much time in the dairy um ourselves now um yeah that's that's pretty much us well that that's uh that's great mark and how how long have you been farming for well (laughs) you might pick up by the accent on this podcast that we're um we're actually kiwis (laughs) so uh we came over and um, 2015, we were we both had agricultural careers um, that were different, and then um, we had our daughter Elsie, and we wanted to sort of bring her up on a farm, rightly or wrongly, with sort of farming values. And the only way we could see ourselves doing that was going dairy farming. So when we came over in 2015, we started sheer farming, and we we sort of being typical Kiwis thought we. We knew it all and then came to all of Victoria and it was like farming on the moon. So, um, yeah, we learned uh, things pretty quickly. Uh, we actually, we our business start, didn't start really getting some wheels until we um, started with the Dairy Business Network and we had got other farmers around us um, and and then we started learning off them and they were very good at what they did and, and then our business got some wheels and then we sort of progressed from from sheer farming to farm leasing to farm ownership. So, yeah, it's been a pretty good ride so far. Well, that is a great ride. Uh, that's a nine-year sort of journey. And, uh, yeah, congratulations. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a fantastic result. Um, can, can I ask uh, both of you, what, what's your perspective and experience around developing skills and investing in your, in your people for the longer term as well as the immediate term? Um, well, we see that uh, employees and and staff are um, you know key asset to our business. Um, we like to uh, I guess treat them uh, with the same respect that that we uh, 
you know, treat each other and treat individuals. So it's important that you're making them feel part of the team and, and for us even part of the family. Um, so I think that um, the aspect of of employees is really important to us. Um, we continue to upskill ourselves and so um, enabling that aspect with our employees is something that's really important to us. Mm. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think it's really uh, nice and gratifying that you, that you use the word uh, respect, and respect goes way, both ways. And I guess just saying is when you invest in your staff, uh, they hopefully invest back in you, your relationship, and, and the farm as well. Um, I'll, I'll get on to maybe some of the benefits you're seeing from that investment in a little bit. But I guess when you were saying that, uh, I occasionally hear things from farmers such as, gosh, if, if I train up my staff, they'll just want to leave for a bigger job. So, uh, and, and I, I have an answer to that, but I'd be interested to to hear, you know, if someone said that to you, what, what would you say with regards to that? So um, we have a bit of a different philosophy um, with that. If... Um, I guess if an employee leaves us and they are particularly going on to um, a position that is, you know, better for them or, you know, has is growth for them, then we've done our job. So um, no, I see that part of the role of being an employer is um, enabling the pathway for um, your employees to not only be able to grow in the job that they're doing, but for them to be able to grow to the capacity that they want to be able to fulfil for their own growth and needs. Um, and if that means that they need to leave us to do that, then um, we feel like we've actually um, supported the industry and we've um, brought out the better good in that uh, person. Yeah, I think um, the other thing is if you don't train them and they stay, that could be worse. Um, so, you know, I, I yeah, I think you get a more invested employee that's trained, and, and yeah, I think I think the staff is a moving target, and like it, you know, the people are going to leave and go, but we actually get more kick out of you know if they're going to a farm management position or they go to something else. Um, yeah, just the way we are, we hate standing still too. So, um, you know, if if we've got a team that are moving forward, it's pretty good. Yeah. That's, that's that's great. I I, th I think that is a great philosophy to have, and um, I think you're you're absolutely right. And I think you know what comes out from sort of what you've just said is, you know, very few things are forever. And so when you look at employees, they're not necessarily with you forever. They have their own um, sort of career goals, and maybe that involves you and your farm, but but maybe it doesn't. And so there's a realization that. Actually, there is a responsibility here to to that person, um, and Charlotte, you know, a, a broader responsibility to the industry, which is you know really really nice to hear. Um, so yeah, that that is um, uh, that is a great answer. Um, I think I think as um, a lot you know, lots of dairy farms are different sizes, and so um, different businesses have the opportunity to provide different. Um, positions and responsibility and growth for different employees and so I guess that's why you know staying on it um, at a certain business may not necessarily be of benefit for that employee but on the other hand there's plenty of employees um, that are you know not necessarily having that desire to grow or that you know have a change in circumstances and so it's also about supporting those people that just want to stay with you and and support your business as well yeah yeah that's right so that they, they don't necessarily want to you know, be promoted onto the next role. They're happy doing what they're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Um. And, and what types of courses are your people attending, both through Dairy Australia and outside of Dairy Australia? Um. So we've probably utilised a reasonable <laughs> scope of the Dairy Australia courses. Um. And that is probably the basis for most of the employee's education. Um, you know, we've um, done things from, you know, cups on, cups off, nutritional fundamentals, um, the safety on dairy farms rearing healthy calves, and um, I suppose through to um, the managing people and farming my team, um, and then on through the scope of things with the Dairy Farm Monitor Group and the Dis Dairy Business Network. So it depends on where um, each of the employee is at, um, 
in their career and the position that they have with us um, to what courses uh, are suitable. But um, they're probably all courses that we've also done. Um, yeah. And and see the benefit of yeah. the, to to our business and the dairy industry. So to we yeah. sort of make the time available. So so um, two days off a month to do training, mm-hmm. and then we advertise the Dairy Australia courses. And yes, if we see something that is needed with a certain employee, we'll we'll push them that way. But a lot of our guy like we'll say look these are the courses on offer take it up you know if you want to go take it up and they'll they'll pick through the ones they want to do um i think we've we've tried to send people on nutritional courses and they're not it's not their space and in saying that you know we've had a development of a of our farm manager who's you know needs to start doing some of that employment stuff now so as his career changes and then um, yeah, we need yeah, as his career changes, we need to, you know, get the different courses um to to help him with that. I yeah. I say that there are we've had some other guys that just want to go and get their truck license. So, you know, if we can allow time to go and get their truck license or or do an AI course or, you know, something else, um, then yeah, we've we've found that really good and and that's been worthwhile for them. So Mm. I think um, it's about knowing your employee. So, you know, there's a large suite of courses um, out there. But like Mark said, um, in one particular case, this this person, he wanted us to get his truck license. And while, you know, I guess that's not uniquely going to um, help, uh, might not have helped with the particular role that he was doing, but that was something that was really important to him. So I think it's about knowing your employees and spending that time chatting to them um, about what what is important to them um, and and what's gonna, what's going to benefit um, them because like you mentioned before everybody in some capacity wants growth um, whether they actually recognise that as growth or not um, you know it's human nature to desire something so it's about having that understanding of your employee about what what courses are relevant to them and even. You know, something like our local engineer that fixes a lot of stuff on our farm. Um, you know, he's he's quite happy for the guys to come down and um, spend a week in his workshop, and he teaches them how to weld and how to use a grinder safely. Yeah. Uh, you know that that sort of train. I can't train that stuff. I'm yeah. I'm terrible with it. I can't weld yeah. to save myself. So we're much better to get someone like that to. Yeah, so so training's where you find it, I think. Mm. That's uh, it, it's fantastic, sort of uh, hearing those examples, and I, I guess uh, you know a couple of things come to mind when you say that. Uh, and, and first and foremost is it doesn't necessarily need to be a sit down course uh, in a classroom for for people to be learning. Uh, some of the best learning is actually done on the job. And in your case, you know, you mentioned the the local, uh, you know, engineering service provider. That is the best place to get that practical uh, training uh, that that probably can't be gotten anywhere else. So that's uh, that's really good. Um, Mark, you mentioned uh, uh, you give two days off per month for training, which is uh, which is really generous, and I think that underlines, you know, what you guys think about this uh, as an investment, what, what benefits have you seen coming from that? Uh, and, and two days per month is is not standard, by the way. So I know there'd be farmers out there saying, gosh, I, I couldn't allow, I couldn't afford two days per month. And that's absolutely fine. Uh, I think the, the message we want is that uh, just some regular investment is uh, is where it's at. But um, in, in looking at you know the courses that you've sent your people to, the, the practical training that you've had them do and continue to have them do, what what are the benefits you, you're seeing from this? That um well we've probably got more engaged staff, yeah, um, and obviously more skilled staff. I wouldn't say that we adopt everything that Dairy Australia you know like if they go on a Dairy Australia cups on cups off course. I know what's going to happen. Like we're going to use like a drum of teat spray the week after because it just it's just it happens to everyone that goes on one of those courses. So 
Um, yeah, I don't. So we don't adopt. There's positives with the course, yeah, so. <laughs> But we don't adopt everything, and then what that creates is then I've got to sort of justify why we don't, and you know, and and that's this farming business, and somebody else's farming business will do that um, differently. So, but you get, I guess it's the conversation about why we don't do it like that, or why we do, and you know, the employee's got to be comfortable that 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 that's our philosophy, and that's how why you've got to explain the why, I suppose. Um, but yeah, we get a more engaged employee, and then there are certainly some things that that our employees bring home that we adopt. That we go, yep, that sounds as if it would work on our farm. Um, I guess, I guess we've found it that yeah, a lot of um, yeah, some people find that time of investment for employees away on farm a lot. But um, I guess. Now we can see on the horizon the end of our dairying career, and yet it's though you know that I guess people in our position, you know, we spend more than two days probably off farm on personal development, whether it's at field days or different things, and I think we you probably get a greater um, bang for your buck if you actually send your employees on those things. At yeah. least, and you know they're going to be longer in the industry and they're going to grow it probably more than what what we are yeah 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 so uh, th- that's uh that's really great that you say that so yeah definitely you know having more engaged employee is one of those things um and and also uh, something that i hadn't really thought of and that is you know, they bring back innovation because let's face it so uh, you know uh some of the best ideas sort of come from outside of sort of our everyday work and um and if you're open to that um, of, of you know new ideas coming in not all ideas because some ideas may be impractical uh, but if you're open to new ideas and then, then I guess you see that benefit you see your business being able to do things differently and, and do them better um, do, do you see any other benefits such as maybe longer term retention of staff coming from this investment too? Um, I think that yeah staff do um recognize the effort that you're going to with um with educating them um and the the if the, that's the right word the fallout of that is that they do tend to stay um with you longer um we've probably through our time had an, a fair number of backpackers that have been the mainstay of our um employees uh, earlier on um in, in our dairy farming career but as we've um progressed we've definitely seen the benefit in um, having you know a mix of um, long-term full-time employees and and backpackers um, but I think that one thing that we've seen is that we do still invest in our backpackers and and sometimes that does mean that they want to stay on and, rem- and be a full-time employee um, for you so I guess that would be my example of where that investment, um, may help with that longer term retention of staff and and that was definitely the case with the person who we've now got as our farm manager um he he started with us as a backpacker and we've supported him for you know a number of years and invested in him um and he he's come back to us and and stayed with us yeah yeah that's uh yeah, that's that's really fantastic. And and as you're saying that, I think there's another benefit that you wouldn't automatically see, but your reputation as an employer uh, sort of gets out there amongst the backpacker community and your your sort of Australian worker community, and you become known as uh, as an employer who invests in people, and that's really attractive to to people to want to join your business and I'm not sure whether you've you've seen that or not because I know employing people is is difficult and and th- this particular podcast isn't about workforce attraction but that is a byproduct that by by investing in people you become known as a better employer and and I think that that carries throughout your community I think the other thing um, is that employees um, actively helping to um, s- promote your business um, because they enjoy working here um, and, and that is all through that longer term benefit and retention of, of them wanting to have a good crew around them and um, 
and them effectively, you know, being part of your and like you say, it's not about recruitment. This, but I think that um, that that retention aspect of of employees definitely helps with um, you being able to source better um, employees onto your team. And we have had an, exa- an example of that where um, within our current team now. Um, one of those employees was actually sourced by by another employee and brought to us um, as an option, and we, you know, have the the right to say yes or no. But um, it's also important that they see that it's that you're, um, you know, you're somebody that you, they would like people that they know to work for as well. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't think there's any stronger compliment than um, you know an employee recommending someone uh, to you as an employer because uh, that, that one that, that they don't want to recommend someone who they don't think would uh, would work out, and two they're, they're confident enough in you as an employer that you know uh, that, that that person is going to get a good experience when they come on farm. I think that there is no greater compliment. I, I would like to temper that <laughs> um, that. Well, like Charlotte's had in her previous uh, job, has had a lot of um, experience, I suppose, in farm employment, and I have not. And so dealing with staff and employing staff uh, has been has been not something when I entered the dairy industry that I thought I would need to do. And then, you know, as we've progressed in, and, um, and stuff, we, we can't do it without staff now. And so it's been a learning experience for me, and I've made plenty, plenty of stuff ups um, along the way, and I still do. And so I think the one thing about the whole backpacker scenario is that that it's a learning. Everyone is a learning experience, and you can um, you can really, you know, you can treat that as a each one's different, and. Um, you can you can you know I guess try and get better and and stuff as you as you go but um, yeah it's it's certainly uh, it's I wouldn't say it's not easy but it's um, it you do have to work at it constantly and you can yeah but I'm, I'm we're quite happy about where we're at now and the yep. guys all get on like we we they generally we all have a meal there is something good about breaking bre- bread together I suppose and we all. Do you really have a meal once a week together? And yeah. so it's good if your team wants to be together as a team. Um, it, it really makes, you know, it's made this autumn just fantastic to to be around and, um, you know, made calving and stuff pretty easy. So, yeah, it's good. Yeah. I guess the other thing um, about the the benefit and the, the payback is that um, there's that unseen um benefit where um you know they go the extra mile for you so you know if you've had a bad week and you've had a, a couple of breakdowns um if they know that you're invested in um and helping them and wanting them to to progress they're happy to you know do those few extra hours or do the extra tasks that you ask or um you know they might end up with and this is not something that we um you know, do on a regular basis, but they more than happily um, put in that extra effort for you. And I think you get that back, you know, 10 times, maybe even 100 times over. Um, and it's it's also about recognising that they do that for you um, as, as you know, good employees um, and as good employers. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's a great point, Charlotte. And, and very humble of you to say that, Mark, that you um, you haven't, you know, got everything right, and let's face it, we're dealing with people, so it's not an exact science. Uh, people can be unpredictable, and not everything that you do uh, with the best of intentions uh, necessarily comes off. But the important thing is that you know you uh, you do enough of the right things, and if your intentions are always right, then then overall uh, you, you're going to come out you're going to come out ahead. And, and I think Charlotte, absolutely, you know that discretionary effort. Um, really pays back. It's not an expectation, um, but but it because you've built great relationships. You know you can sometimes lean on those relationships. Uh, you know if uh, if things are tough, and um, you know, I, I think they're they're really really great words. Um, what what would you recommend to other farmers who are listening regarding skills and capability? Um, 
Yeah, so just just from a practical point of view, where what would you what would you suggest? Um, probably a good point is sort of finding out what what they really like to do, um, or what makes them tick. Um, you know, we've we've currently got a guy that's studied as a vet, and so whenever the vet's there, we try and get him to be alongside our vet, sort of things. Um, so we're, yeah, I think you've got to find what they're really interested in and then design, well, not design, but encourage them to chase what they are, you know, what, what's made them join the dairy industry, what do they like, and then try and get to find those educational things that initially, you know, tick that box. There are some, some things like, um, the, you know, cups on, cups off, because everybody here milks, so... You know, that's probably one of the courses that everybody does. But yeah, that, that's sort of what I'd recommend. But you right. So it it is quite individual, and um, and yeah, step number one is is getting to know the person. You know, where where they're at, where their motivations are, what they want to do for the future, and, and how that fits with your farm. So you don't you don't necessarily throw people on courses that um uh that that aren't of a benefit to you. And I think, you know, Charlotte, you mentioned uh, your employee there getting a truck license. And I listen to that and say, okay, there is a crossover there. Um, so it, it would be helpful to your farm, no doubt, an employee having a truck license. But it, there's there's a mix of maybe that's partly sort of your benefit and partly that's for the benefit of the employee, you know, uh, moving forward. And, um, and if that still sort of weighs up and then then that's a good result for for both. I think the other thing that we often look at is, you know, their attitude um, to work and and I guess generally their attitude to life and and around their work ethic and and their capabilities. And so it's like Mark said, it, it's having that conversation with them, understanding um, them and and what's important. Um, to them and then how do we actually link that back to what's going to be a benefit to the business so um, yeah like, like we've both touched on it it's not about just finding a course and throwing everybody on it it's about what what needs um, fit both both parts of the of the equation so you know what's going to benefit our, them and what's also going to benefit uh, you know us as a business and and it's, sometimes it's about them benefiting us personally as well um so you know you can become quite um close with your employees particularly when you work um in a family farming operation on a on a dairy farm yeah. um and so there's nothing worse than a disgruntled employee because you've sent them on a course just to tick the box that I've sent somebody away for training. Yeah, yeah. We, had a, we had a girl that um, she was doing a level four, I think level four politic. Was it? Cert three, a cert, cert four in, in agriculture. Cert four in agriculture. And so, yep, she was going away uh, each week doing doing that, uh, one day a week, cert four, which is totally fine for us. Um, but um, if you're going to do a cert for an agriculture, for us, we want to make sure, so we were pretty invested in making sure that she passed her or did her modules and passed those. And it's not about being top of the class. It's about just if you're going to invest that time and you've spent the money to do it, you might as well, you know, have that, that certificate at the bottom. So, um, you know, we were pretty proud she, she achieved that, but uh, she was the only one that did it out of a year. You know, yeah, because that that you got to make sure that those if you're going to go and do that, you want to get that box ticked. And and um, if you're going to invest in in your education, you need to have something out the other end for it. You yeah. do yeah. yeah, yeah, very true. Um, are there you know it's, you you speak a little bit about sort of Dairy Australia. In fact, you reel off a a, a range of courses there. Um. Uh, are there any areas that you see regarding course development that you'd like to see uh, someone like Dairy Australia focus on that isn't currently being addressed? Um, so I think there's a good range of young people that are in that sort of herd management role and are not, are about to make the next step. They've got to take the full gamut of not only herd management, but um, farm budgeting, 
employee management um, that there's a there's a fair bit in that next step, and there's there's a lot of help that's needed in that regard. Mm. Um, I think we quite often get the best herd manager that's the best with the cows, mm. and maybe that and yes, that person is going to be best for the cows, but is he going to be best for the farm, or he or she going to be best for the farm? And and so. Um, you know, they uh, Dairy Australia had a stepping up, stepping out. I think um, uh, thing yeah. that we attended and we found really good. And but something more in that space, I think, would be um, would be really good. Yep, yep. No worries. Well, look, we we do have a couple of leadership uh, development uh, offerings in that space. Um, so. Uh, Melva, it might be timely uh, for for you to talk about. What sort of resources, courses, events are available from our mm-hmm. Dairy Australia regional offices? So you work in uh, in the Murray office. Uh, I do. Yep. We've got eight dairy regions, and we've got eight regional offices. What what um, if, if farmers were interested? Yeah. What what, uh, what could you suggest there? Right. Um, the, well, to be honest, look, Charlotte and Michael have been wonderful just listening to you talk, and you've really covered almost all. Um, all the areas that I would like to uh, mention today. And I also just want to say, um, people listening, um, the way the pathway to actually find these courses will be through your workforce person at the RDP, so one of the eight regions of Dairy Australia, um, or via the e-news, um, or through your local discussion groups, for example. So types of courses, starting at the very start, are um, making sure um, staff before you even consider people development, making sure that they're employed correctly and that they are safe. So two that spring into mind are employment basics and farm safety. So that's certainly coming more from the employer side of the equation. But when you're looking at developing people further, Dairy Australia has this amazing um, learning platform called Enlight. And um, to gain full access to that, again, just working with your local RDP, but it has such courses as uh, starting out in dairy, which um, has working with livestock and safety on farm. So that's for the absolute brand new green beginner um, on on the dairy farm. Um, people and safety um, is a whole uh, portfolio on the um, Enlight platform, and we cover items such as farming with my team, um, managing people. So farming with my team is about bringing that leader. Um, the leader um, of a team, for example, um, getting letting them to get to know their own leadership style and what what's effective and how leadership can work. Managing people um, is for the brand new um, person stepping into that space who is actually um, uh, developing in along with the team further. Um, and then, of course, um, employment basics is can be online or face to face. Um, and just delving a little bit deeper into people development, as uh, Charlotte and Mark have mentioned, lots of programs in the animal health and welfare area, so milking mastitis management, transition cow management, cups on, cups off, um, healthy hooves, all just examples, a few more in there as well. And then we can just keep going, um, farm performance, feed, feed base uh, and soils and irrigation. Um, and of course, there is a, an area there for feedback to collect information similar to what Mark was just saying in regard to where you see as a farm business owner, um, we can actually develop a few more courses in that space. Yep. Um, and sorry, just one more space as well. I uh, just wanted to mention uh, education, of course, comes from many avenues, but just um Mark, you were mentioning a, an apprentice um, that you've got there. So um, we can we can work with schools, for example, and they can do students can do a school based apprenticeship um, coming on to the farm one day a week. Or in the case that Mark was mentioning, the the student the person was going to a TAFE or similar organisation to get their training elsewhere. So lots of um, development available out there. So back to you, Mick. <laughs> No, well, that is uh, really extensive. Thank you so much for that. Um, uh, you mentioned the Enlight uh, uh, learning platform, and you know that that's our industry learning platform. So it's free for everyone to use. It's informative, and in many ways, it's actually industry leading. I don't know too many industries, certainly within agriculture, that has the sort of resource offering in Enlight, and it can be done online. So you know, if people are time poor, 
Uh, they don't have to travel. Uh, they can just do that from the comfort of their own home. Um, and so uh, the only other thing that I'd like to mention is, uh, you know, Mark, you spoke about uh, you know getting to know the employee and what their needs are sort of as a first point. And I think that's very true. Uh, we, we have here at Dairy Australia developed the Dairy Capability Guide. It's available on our People in Dairy website, and it includes a self-assessment tool for both farmers and employees to get a reference point for where they're currently at, um, what they could be focusing on. Um, and this is, as I said, found on our People in Dairy website. And uh, yeah, the Dairy Capability Guide uh, is uh, is pretty extensive. It's been developed in cooperation with farmers, uh, for farmers. So um, that that too is a, is a great new resource. Um, we're we're about at the end, uh, and so we're we're out of time today. I think we could talk for hours to tell you the truth, but thank you, Charlotte, Mark, and Melba for your time uh, in the discussion today. And for anyone listening, if you would like to look at this area further, please look at the dairy uh, podcast notes um, attached to this episode for resource references, uh, or as Melba said, reach out to your local uh, regional Dairy Australia office, and uh, they'll be only too willing to help you in this area. Um, thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. No worries. Right, thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you for joining today's Dairy Pod episode. We hope you found it enjoyable and insightful. For more information, check out the episode notes. You can stay up to date by following Dairy Pod on your favourite podcast platform. To get in touch, visit dairyaustralia.com.au. Until next time, take care.